Welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Griebel, and this video is part 51 of a Bible study based on the book of Genesis. As it says there on the screen, our focus today will be on chapter 46. Before we get to Genesis, though, let's have our opening hymn, another great Advent hymn from our hymnal, Savior of the Nations Come. come virgin son make here your home marvel now O heaven and earth that the Lord chose such a birth not by human flesh and blood by the Spirit of our God was the Word of God made flesh, woman's offspring pure and fresh. Here a maid was found with child, yet remained a virgin mild, in her womb this truth was shown god was there upon his throne then stepped forth the lord of all from his pure and kingly hall god of god yet fully man his heroic course began. God the Father was his source. Back to God he ran his course. Into hell his road went down. Back then to his throne and crown. For you are the Father's Son, who in flesh the victory won. By your mighty power make whole all our ills of flesh and soul. From the manger newborn light, Shines in glory through the night. Darkness there no more resides. In this light faith now abides. Glory to the Father, sing. Glory to the Son, our King. Glory to the Spirit be, now and through eternity. And we join in our opening prayer. O oh God, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, let's get right to our study of Genesis chapter 46. We start by looking at the verse, first 27 verses. So Israel took his journey with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. 
And God spoke to Israel in visions of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you into a great nation. I myself will go down with you to Egypt, and I will, bring, and I will also bring you up again, and Joseph's hand shall close your eyes. Then Jacob set out from Beersheba, from Beersheba. The sons of Israel carried Jacob their father, their little ones and their wives, and the wagons that Pharaoh had sent to carry him. They also took their livestock and their goods, which they had gained in the land of Canaan, and came into Egypt, Jacob and all his offspring with him, his sons and his sons' sons with him, his daughters and his sons' daughters. All his offspring he brought with him into Egypt. Now these are the names of the descendants of Israel who came into Egypt, Jacob and his sons. Reuben, Jacob's firstborn, and the sons of Reuben, Hanak, Palu, Hezron, and Carmi. The sons of Simeon, Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shaul. The, sons of a, the son of a Canaanite woman. The sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. The sons of Judah, Er, Ur, Onan, Shelah, Perez, and Zerah. But Ur and Onan died in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Perez were Hezron and Hamul. The sons of Issachar, Tola, Puva, Job, and Shimron. The sons of Zebulun, Sirid, Elon, and Jaliel. These are the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Jacob in Paddan Aram, together with his daughter Dinah. Altogether his sons and his daughters numbered 33. The sons of Gad, Ziphion, Hagi, Shunai, Esban, Eri, Arodai, and Arelai. The sons of Asher, Imna, Ishva, Ishvi, Bariah, with Sarah their sister, and the sons of Bariah, Heber, and Malkiel. These are the sons of Zilpah, whom Laban gave to Leah, his daughter, and these she bore to Jacob, sixteen persons. The sons of Rachel, Jacob's wife, Joseph, and Benjamin. And to Joseph in the land of Egypt were born Manasseh and Ephraim, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, the priest of On, bore to him. And the sons of Benjamin, Bela, Beker, Ashbel, Gera, Naaman, Ehi, Rosh, Mupim, Huppim, and Ard. These are the sons of Rachel who were born to Jacob, fourteen persons in all. The sons of Dan, Hushim, the, the son of Dan, Hushim, the sons of Naphtali, Jaziel, Guni, Jezer, and Shillam. These are the sons of Bilhah, whom Laban gave to Rachel his daughter, and these she bore to Jacob, seven persons in all. All the persons belonging to Jacob who came into Egypt, who were his own descendants, not including Jacob's sons' wives, were sixty-six persons in all. And the sons of Joseph, who were born to him in Egypt, were two. All the persons of the house of Jacob who came into Egypt were seventy. All right, let's take a look at some of these verses. First of all, it says that on their way down to Egypt, verse 1, they stopped in Beersheba. Why would they stop in Beersheba? What is the significance of that place? Well, Beersheba was a very important place for Jacob and his ancestors. Genesis 21, we read about what happened there with Abraham. So they, namely Abraham and a man, a king by the name of Abimelech, made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, rose up and returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Then skipping ahead to Genesis 26, with regard to Jacob's father Isaac, that same day Isaac's servants came and told him about the well that they had dug and said to him, we have found water. He called it Shib Sheba. Therefore the name of the city is Beersheba to this day. Finally, in Genesis 28, Jacob left Beersheba 
and went toward Haran. So Beersheba was a significant place in the lives of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Beersheba was in the very southernmost part of the land of Canaan. Oftentimes when they describe the land of Canaan, they talk about from Dan to Beersheba. So Dan was the northernmost region of the promised land, the land of Canaan, and Beersheba then would be the southernmost part of the land of Canaan, the promised land. And as, it, as we just read, very important place. Abraham was there, Isaac was there, and then Jacob, when he left to go to Haran, uh, left, was living in Beersheba at the time. And as it says, uh, Abraham had worshipped there, set up an altar and worshipped the Lord at Beersheba. What did God promise Jacob when he was in Beersheba? God, as we look at verses 2 to 4, God appeared to Jacob at Beersheba and promised to be with Jacob to make him into a great nation and that Joseph would close his eyes when he died. So this is now at least the second or third time that God has appeared to Jacob and again the promise that he would be with him, that he would bless him, make him into a great nation and then he added here that Joseph, his son, would be the one to close his eyes when he died. All right, then looking at verses 5 through 7, who all did Jacob take with him down to Egypt? Jacob took his entire family and they took all their possessions. So we read through all those names, some of them very unfamiliar names, but it lists them all off by name and you have to go back into the earlier chapters to keep track of all of them, but Jacob basically had two wives, daughters of Laban, and they were Leah and Rachel. But then Laban also gave to Jacob two servant girls to go with Leah and Rachel. And Jacob also had children by them. So there were four women involved who gave children to Jacob. And those are all listed there. And Jacob took all of them along with their daughters and their sons and daughters down with him to Egypt and all their possessions. And it was a group numbering about 70. And looking at verse 3 then, why do you suppose God made Jacob and his family great, a great nation in Egypt? So up to this point, Jacob had had 12 sons, but they had only grown in size to a group of about 70 plus women and children. Um, but then God said, down in Egypt, that's where you're going to become great. Well, sometimes God's people do their best work in tough circumstances when they are under and not the best ideal circumstances. That's often when things actually end up going better for God's people. And that there's a very specific reason for that, to make his people realize that they depend on God, not on themselves, for their success, for their blessings. They all come from God, not because of anything they have done. And then looking at verse 5, compare Jacob's journey to Egypt compared to his journey to Haran. If you want to read the whole story about this, Jacob, in, you turn to Genesis chapter 28, verses 1 to 22. So, in Genesis chapter 28, when he's journeying to Haran, he's running for his life because his brother Esau wants to kill him. Here, as he's going to Egypt, he's going to meet his son, who was an honored ruler in the kingdom of Egypt. When he went to Haran, he was by himself. He had no family, no wife, no children, but he was on, it, on the run all by himself. Here he's going with a group of 70 men plus women and children. When he went to Haran, he went north from Beersheba to get to Haran, you had to go north. And here he's going south to get to Egypt. But the similarity in both cases, God appeared to him in both instances and promised to be with him and to bless him. When, he, when God appeared to him on a, when he was traveling to Haran, um, that's when we have the story of his dream, when he saw the stairway leading from earth to heaven and the angels of God ascending and descending on the stairway, a very, uh, on the ladder, a very beautiful dream and in which God appeared to him at that point. And here God appears to him again as he's on his way to Egypt. 
And then, why weren't the women included in the count of the number of those who went to Egypt? We read this very consistently throughout Scripture. In Exodus 12, the people of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 men on foot, besides women and children. So this describes what happens when the descendants of Jacob come out of Egypt. They went down there with 70 men plus women and children. They come out of Egypt with 600,000 men plus women and children. And then Matthew 14 in the New Testament, those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. That's the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And again, the men are numbered, but the women are not. We don't know why. The women are mentioned, the children are mentioned, but they are not numbered. So pretty consistently, the Bible does not record numbers for women and children, just counts the men. All right, let's look at the rest of chapter 46. He had sent Judah ahead of him to Joseph to show the way before him in Goshen, and they came into the land of Goshen. Then Joseph prepared his chariot and went up to meet Israel his father in Goshen. He presented himself to him and fell on his neck and wept on his neck a good while. Israel said to Joseph, Now let me die, since I have seen your face and know that you are still alive. Joseph said to his brothers and to his father's household, I will go up and tell Pharaoh and will say to him, My brothers and my father's household who were in the land of Canaan have come to me. And the men are shepherds, for they have been keepers of livestock, and they have brought their flocks and their herds and all that they have. When Pharaoh calls you and says, What is your occupation? You shall say, Your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth even until now, both we and our fathers, in order that you may dwell in the land of Goshen, for every shepherd is an abomination to the Egyptians. All right, let's look at some of these verses and passages. What was the reunion of Jacob and Joseph like? They embraced and cried a long time. And just imagine, so Jacob, for over 20 years, Jacob was convinced that Joseph was dead, that he had been killed by a wild animal. That's the story that Joseph's brothers had convinced Jacob was true, that Joseph had been killed by a wild animal. All the time they knew that he hadn't been killed, that he had, they had sold him as a slave to Egypt. Then came the word that Joseph was alive and that Joseph was ruler in Egypt. And Jacob then, even though he was old, now had the opportunity to travel to Egypt and be re reunited with his son. Must have been quite the reunion. Compare the words of Jacob in this verse with the words of Simeon in Luke chapter 2, verses 29 to 30. In, so, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. That's what Simeon said in Luke chapter 2. Both men were now willing to die in peace because of seeing someone. In the case of Jacob, he saw his son Joseph. And in the case of Simeon, he saw the infant Jesus. That story from Luke chapter 2 is when Joseph and Mary brought Jesus into the temple to present him to the Lord, dedicate him to the Lord. Simeon was there and saw Jesus. He had been told by the Holy Spirit that before he died, he would see the Lord's Messiah. And when Jesus was brought in, the Holy Spirit told him and convinced him that was the one. He picked up Jesus and held him in his arms and he said, Lord, now, you, now I may die in peace for I have seen your salvation. And Jacob pretty much says the same thing when he, sees, when he sees his son Joseph. Now I can die in peace because I have seen my son Joseph. How did Jacob and his family end up in the land of Goshen? Goshen was a land suitable for Jacob's livestock and shepherds were an abomination to the Egyptians. We don't know why the Egyptians hated shepherds, but go the land of Goshen was apparently ideal for flocks and herds and that's what they had. So Pharaoh then allowed Jacob and his family to settle in the land of Goshen. All right, that concludes our study of Genesis chapter 46. We hope you have enjoyed this and will like it on YouTube and share it with other people. 
And if you have not already done so, we invite you to become a subscriber to Redeemer's YouTube channel. That way, anytime we post a new video, you can be notified. We conclude now with a benediction. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.